Hey guys, I'm here with Benison from Pagasa. He's an absolutely fantastic forecaster, and recently he's been putting out a lot of great information on YouTube, and plus he does a fantastic job relaying that information uh, in video format uh, on Pagasa's social media and at their website. So I wanted to sit down and talk with him about not only Pagasa, but some of the stuff he's doing. So thank you very much for uh, talking with me here today. Thank you also, Robert, for having me and um, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, we're on different sides of the world when we're oh, shooting yeah. this. So it is yeah. good morning for you and everybody in the Philippines. Nice little evening spot for me. But thank you very much uh, for taking the time to talk with me. First, um, can you just uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and your career? Yes, so I am uh, currently weather specialist too of Pagasa. I currently work in the weather forecasting section. So we are the ones making the output like the weather forecast, shipping forecast, warnings and bulletins for tropical cyclones. And then we are the ones who also disseminate that information to the public through our live updates. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And like about those live updates, uh, can you touch more on that? Because um, I, we see those, and especially during typhoons, we, we see those updates. We see you guys in front of the, the, the screen there and talking about that. So you just tell us a little about how you disseminate some of that information. On regular days, we uh, report every 12 hours. That is five in the morning and five in the afternoon, Philippine time. But then whenever there are tropical cyclones inside the Philippine area of responsibility, we issue, oh, we report them every six hours. We give updates and the bulletins we have, the tropical cyclone bulletin, we issue them every three hours. It was a pretty busy day, <laughs> to say yes, the least. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you know, when you're talking about these tropical cyclone bulletins, is that something that a weather specialist kind of puts out? Like when uh, when people are looking at that, you know, the forecast cone from Bagasa, is that something that you do? Yes, we are also the ones determining that cone of uncertainty. That's what we call it. Mm hmm. All right, so I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot here, and this is, you know, we we see the YouTube comments, we see the comments on Facebook. Um, why do you think there is kind of a historically bad perception about Pagasa? I think it all boils down to, you know, they are the ones relying uh, to our information and. Um, they, they, their lives rely on our forecast so we cannot blame them if they notice that there are some changes with uh, with how for example the tropical cyclones have been moving we inform for example uh, tropical cyclone Dante or Haikui um, we are early on, earlier on uh, when it entered the PAR we told people that it has very slim chance of making a landfall or affecting the country but then as days go by um, there are changes in the weather patterns and some data, incoming data. So we realize that um, it has a higher chance. And actually, it, it will, it is going to have some landfall scenarios. And that's how forecasts work. I mean, for us forecasters, it we have we have been resilient into receiving some backlash or bashes from other people. Because we understand the the concept of forecast, we just have to let other people know that this is how forecast works. You know, there are some changes in the atmosphere constantly, and um, as we go out further into the days, there is a higher chance of being of it of our forecast being less accurate. And um, of course, as a forecaster myself, I felt like I need to filter out all those, you know, negative comments until until such time that I'm getting used to having them, um, a few of them, you know, I think that's the human instinct as well. Like there are so many good comments, but then whenever we see one or two, it just, it just ruins your day. <laughs> that's why we, we need to have that practice of like filtering out those, all those comments. You know what? I, I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, this happened to me uh, actually just the other day and I'm, I know I'm interviewing you, but I just want to, you know, relay with you. Uh, we were just covering uh, Tropical Storm Elsa in Florida, and I, I got a bunch of n nice people. People were saying, yeah, nice, great. But, you know, there was a tornado that came through here, and I, I got a couple nasty comments, even though, uh, you know, we did mention there was a potential for tornadoes. But uh, my point is, 
I 100% agree with you. Sometimes you just got to filter that stuff out. I also 100% agree with you um, about, you know, the last storm. Yeah, the track did change, but it, it's just one of those scenarios where you're right. It's That's why we always say, look at the cone of air, right? And, um, and sometimes things can kind of wobble or change just a bit. You know what another thing, and maybe you could talk to somebody there at Pagasa or the Philippine government, uh, it would be... The fact that there's just, we don't have like recon or anything in the Western Pacific. So sometimes the models just have a hard time picking up on tropical systems. Oh yes, I think it's it boils down to the budget because mm -hmm. we don't have that means to purchase aircraft that could withstand strong winds whenever uh, there's a tropical cyclone passing by. Let's stay on the topic, you know, of typhoons. Uh, and this is one thing and I know that Tagalog and English are not the only languages, of course, spoken in the Philippines. Um, there are just dozens and dozens of languages. Uh, how is that a challenge and how does Pagasa kind of remedy that when putting out warnings? The good thing about having Tagalog and forecast uh, in English as our medium for weather forecast, anyone who is not actually the who's actually speaking, for example, Bisaya or Ilocano or Bicolano, they can understand both English and Tagalog. And if they are having a hard time understanding those forecasts in those languages, then we have regional services divisions of Pagasa. We have Northern Luzon for Ilocano. And then for Southern Luzon, uh, there are translations in Bicol, in Mindanao and Visayas, uh, regional services divisions. There are um, languages in Visaya. That is why uh, it's not that difficult, but of course, we want to make sure that the inclusivity of, you know, having having these people understand them at the fastest possible time so they can react to our forecast. All right. So how about, um, the, so Benison, could you tell us uh, just uh, maybe one of the more difficult or challenging typhoons you forecasted that hit the Philippines? I quite remember the recent ones, like uh, Super Typhoon Rolly. Um, mm -hmm. with an international name Goni. Um, we were forecasting it that it will it may hit central Luzon or even Quezon province somewhere in the southern Luzon but then it went further downwards like it hit Bicol region uh, the southern portion of Bicol region and then it traversed the rest of like Marinduque, Mindoro something like that if you know the geography um, which is slightly off the the target, the original forecast track of Pagasa, and Raleigh is not, um, it's not a weak one, you know, it, it became a super typhoon, right? That's yeah. why it's a very big deal for those people that will even receive storm surges, for example. It's a big issue in the Philippines. We also had like issues with which ones are going to receive rainfall because that was the time when there is a northeast monsoon and whenever tropical cyclones interact with monsoons, it gets really the rainfall gets really bad um especially not not directly on those uh, affected but also somewhere outside on the outer rain bands of the tropical cyclone mm -hmm. so it became an issue for us people were complaining why did you why didn't you raise our wind signals into number three or number four wherein we get so much rains mm -hmm. so that's the issue for us and i just i just believe that we did our best when it comes to warning these people and giving them um, heavy rainfall warnings outside of those that didn't receive um, tropical cyclone wind signals. I, I think that's something that, yeah, it, it, sometimes people just don't. And we even in the States, we kind of have the same issue uh, is that people just don't connect the tropical warning with the heavy rainfall warnings yes. because, you know, you'll, you'll have that separate problem things. too. Yeah. Yeah. Two separate things. And, you know, and also... Uh, sometimes, you know, the like if we call a storm um, a cat one, cat two, cat three, that's based on wind and not storm surge. So yeah. uh, I suppose, and you can probably confirm this for me, it's very important to pay attention and read and listen to the forecast. Yes, and rainfall are much more difficult to predict. And, you know, the lead time is much shorter as compared to wind signals. So let's talk about your YouTube channel because you've been putting out some great stuff about, you know, for example, how to become a weather forecaster, what it's like to working at Pagasa. Can you tell us about that? What what made you think, you know what, 
I want to put out a YouTube channel and I want to talk about meteorology. I'm just curious. Can you understand what I was saying in my videos? Uh, some of them I can. You know what? I, mm. I can understand Taglish and I can understand wow. a bit a bit of Tagalog. You know, I um I live kind of with a, a Philippine family here, so I, I, I learned a little bit. Plus, you use a lot of pretty animation, so you can follow along with it. Yes, I, I, I've been using English, like subtitles and some details in it, but my my language is Taglish, Tagalog and English. And yeah, thank you for uh, for mentioning that. I have a YouTube channel. I started it just this year, around February, and I've been posting videos about meteorology in the Philippines, how to be a weather forecaster, some of the fre frequently asked questions here in the country. And so far, so good. I'm having, I, I just had my 700th subscriber. And hopefully before the year ends, uh, it will reach a thousand. <laughs> That's my target. Nice. Well, hey, anybody watching this video, uh, make sure I'll put a link down below. Head over uh, to his YouTube you. channel. Check it out. It's great stuff in there. And like I said, even if you, you don't speak Tagalog, he does put a lot of information. He speaks in Taglish. And like you just said, there's subtitles there too. So it's a little bit of something for everybody. Yes, that's meteorologist Benison Estareja, or meteorologist awesome. Benison, yeah. All right. Um, so also, let's. Um, this is not really meteorology related, but like I said, we're. I'm just. Uh, it's. I'm gonna change it up a little bit so it doesn't get a little boring. Toss a little stuff in here. So if you could visit anywhere in the world, not in the Philippines, because I know you're gonna. You're going to be obligated to say somewhere in the Philippines. And also, there's so many beautiful places there. But if you could visit anywhere in the world, not in the Philippines, where would you go? The place where I want to go right now. Well, it doesn't have to be weather related, right? But nope. I want to go. Um, I would like to go to Japan. I haven't been to Japan. Like, I have, a, I have been to many places in Europe and Southeast Asia. But I just want to go to Japan right now. Hmm. Yeah, as you know, I, I lived there for about a decade. Tell you, that's oh, a good choice. Yeah. Oh, and also, I don't know if these are going to go in it or not, but, you know, this is another one I was just thinking about. Um, I actually just had some adobo not too long ago. <laughs> it was great. What is your favorite Philippine dish? My absolute favorite, well, the first one is actually spaghetti, Pinoy you know, spaghetti, but the the one dish i had is like um sinigang mm. um pork sinigang if you know that one it's yeah. a little bit sour and then there's a lot of like pork that's fantastic so when you're talking about spaghetti you mean like jolly bee spaghetti yes there that you, one. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you just know it i, I know you know it <laughs> of course of course it's famous <laughs> all right um okay and lastly I guess um, and this is just kind of the, the wrap up or anything that you feel like maybe I haven't told you that you want to relay. If you just want to put out something to an audience, just telling them about yourself or about Pagasa or anything like that, you know, just kind of what else would you like to say here? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank, take this opportunity to thank you, Robert, for inviting me over because there are so many forecasters here, so many forecasters also outside of Pagasa that you could have interviewed. And I, I would like to take this opportunity as well to speak to many um, like netizens who are bashing or like giving ne negative comments to Pagasa that, you know, it, it's we are not doing this just to just to put out a, a weather forecast out there. We are here to save lives. We are here. We are focused on giving as much um, more impactful information to the people and um, Whatever forecast we're laying out there, it's 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 on us, you know. Um, we just we're just putting our heads out there just to just to get bashed. But but moreover, we are here to help you, help help our society, help those in need, and protect your lives and property. And with that, I would also like to promote my YouTube channel because I know you all have questions about the weather, as to for example, why is it hard to predict the weather, or how do Pagasa name, uh, give names to tropical cyclones, something like that. And I'll give out more videos. I'll upload more in the coming weeks. And um, hopefully I'll get to also interview you, Robert, in the future when I when I reach like 
a thousand subscribers. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> wow, thank you. All right, well, thank you very much as well. I mean, uh, uh, you're, you're saying thanks to me, but I'm very happy that you were able to come on here and just do a quick chat with me about, you know, everything going on out there. So um, hopefully next time in the Philippines, maybe I can uh, uh, meet with you there as well. Yes, yes. All right, well, hey, thanks again. Have a fantastic day, I guess, for everybody else. Thank you. Um, go check out his YouTube channel. Stay safe out there.